This lecture is entitled Thomas Jefferson and Neoclassical Architecture in America. And here we have a portrait of Thomas Jefferson alongside Monticello. Monticello, which was his home and his very elegant home that he designed. And it's one of the buildings for which he's most famous. Now, Thomas Jefferson obviously is an important figure in American history because of his role in its founding and his role as a political figure, right? We know he um, wrote the Declaration of Independence, one of the most important documents in the founding of America, and he was the third president of the United States. But for our purposes, he's very important as um, a, a architectural designer and an architect essentially and he really helped to define a distinctly American architecture in the late 18th and early 19th centuries and it's important to know that he was not trained as an architect but he was an extremely curious man he was an extremely well-educated man uh, and he traveled a lot saw the world and took what he learned and applied it to architecture uh, in a very passionate way. So let's take a look, a, a better look at this image here on the right, and that is Monticello. So here it is again, Monticello. I'll write that again for you, Monticello. And it was built over the course of many years from about 1770 to 1809. And this is in Virginia. And again, that it was his home. And it, I have it up here next to this image, which is actually from the 16th century in Italy. And it is by a figure you should remember the name of, and that is Palladio. Um, you might remember Palladio with regards to the English architect Inigo Jones, who we discussed. Um, Inigo Jones was very influenced by the work of the Italian Palladio, and so was Thomas Jefferson. And this building here is a home, a villa, in Italy. And I think you can see there's a lot of similarities between these two buildings. Um, we have that traditional classical temple front with the columns across the front, the triangular pediment, um, and so that's imitated here at Monticello. Uh, we have a prominent dome at the top, which Thomas Jefferson copies here. So he's very interested in classical architecture, right? That's what's sort of going on at this time, the revival of classical architecture, but it's seen through the lens of this Renaissance architect who wrote treatises um, about classical architecture. So um, it's a revival of classical architecture through someone who had earlier sought to revive classical architecture. So really interesting um, thing going on there. But I think again you can really see a clear reference to this architect who Thomas Jefferson very much admired. Um, but and again, this is you know his private residence, and it was a, an ongoing project for Thomas Jefferson, the work on this building, but it was really a labor of love. But one of the most important projects for Thomas Jefferson was actually his work on the University of Virginia. So let's turn our attention to that now. So here we have sort of the central um, quad the central um, area of the University of Virginia um, with this rotunda at the end and the flanking buildings on the sides. And let's get rid of that mark I just put there. Okay, so here are the flanking buildings on the sides. And here's just a better image of that rotunda. And again, this is the University of Virginia. This was near to Monticello, and it dates to about 1818 through 26. And Jefferson established the University of Virginia 
in 1818, and it was really one of the most important projects of his life. Um, he references his work in founding the univer founding and building the University of Virginia on his tombstone. You know, he wanted that to be one of the things that people remembered about him after his death. And he believed very strongly in education and in providing public education for people. It was a thing that he was very passionate about. And he envisioned um, in this little space here what he called an academical village. Academical village. And that sounds very quaint and maybe even utopian. And it kind of was. He had this idealized view of this space where people could learn freely, um, exchange ideas, further knowledge. Um, and really, this is a quintessentially neoclassical uh, philosophy, really at the heart of this. And um, interestingly, this rotunda that's kind of the focal point of the space um, was a library library. And what's interesting about that is that it, the typical college or university design would have put a chapel here, right? So a, a building for religion would have been the focal point, whereas Thomas Jefferson was forward thinking and realized, no, religion should not be a, a part of that. He thought books and knowledge and information should be a part of that. And that's a really interesting thing because we see the lasting impact of those enlightenment ideals, right, with, that replaced religion with knowledge and science and reason. So we're still, you know, working out of that tradition and, and um, reaping the benefits of enlightenment thinkers at this time. So, you know, just taking a look at the style here, um, we once again have a clear reference to classical style and that same Palladian style with this temple front and the dome at the back. Um, again, you know, classical style seen through the lens of Palladio. So you have some readings that discuss both Monticello and University of Virginia, so I won't discuss too much more, but I just wanted to end by saying that I think this is a really interesting art historical monument, not only because it had such a lasting impact on American architecture, particularly universities, but also because it reveals the spirit of American values at this time, and it shows how the reapplication of classical principles matched those values.